Look, I even made my mom put on overalls for this. <laughs> all right, here we go. Here we have all of the leftover sauna tubes build this structure with mostly leftover materials that we have on site. It's called Jacko Bean. Viant's super messy, so we have to uh, clean up after him. Or is my fault, you guys. Winter is here. First time that we ever built our own door frame. What do you think this is? Basically, we are just like turning all of the knobs, trying to figure out which one does what. But first time to do dishes. Winter Wonderland today out on the ranch. I don't think you need the dustpan. So far, so good. <laughs> Today we are going to be using the shower for the first time. Okay, let's go. But first, a word from our sponsor. You guys are going to love this product. But what is it, you ask? Let me introduce you to the Van Powers Super Power Pro 1500, a 1,440 watt hour or 1.5 kilowatt hour portable power station. It has multiple ways to charge and multiple ways to power external devices. Along with having wheels and a telescoping handle, it has built-in GPS and can act as a UPS. It even has a mobile app. The Van Powers Super Power Pro 1500 has a 1,440 watt hour capacity and can go through 6,000 cycles. It comes in as a heavyweight at 41.5 pounds, or 18.8 kilograms for you metric peeps out there. It has a 6.1 inch color LCD screen that's easy to read. Here's a list of all the display options for the front LCD screen. Recharge time is 1.5 to 2 hours, and this portable power station offers a lot of different output options. The Van Power Super Power Pro 1500 comes with a car charger cable, two USB-C to USB-A adapters, a warranty card that's good for two years, a user manual, MC4 to XT60 cable for solar charging, an AC cable. Here's a rundown of the DC outlet ports. There are two 100 watt USB-C ports, two 20 watt USB-C BC ports and three 136 watt DC 5521 ports. Van Powers also includes two USB C to USB A adapters. Okay, not for the AC outlets. On the side of the power station, there are six AC outlets and they are arranged in different configurations to allow multiple things to be plugged in at the same time. This is super helpful for when you have to plug in items like camera chargers or plugs that usually block the other outlets. Underneath the teal cover is a 136 watt car adapter. On the opposite side of the power station, you will find the input ports. As you can see, there are multiple ways to recharge the Van Powers Super Power Pro 1500. Van Powers also offers solar chargers. Here we are setting up the Van Powers SP200 foldable solar panel. This was super easy to set up and I love that it comes with a carrying case for the solar panels and accessories. Equipped with Sun Power monocrystalline silicon solar cells, the Van Powers SP200 solar panel's conversion efficiency is as high as 23%. It allows up to 95% light transmittance and it also performs better than polycrystalline solar panels in low light conditions. The built-in 45 degree kickstands let you keep your solar panels at the optimal angle to fully absorb that sunshine. The Van Powers SP200 has IP65 rated dust and water resistance and won't deform, fade, or get scratched, making it an ideal combo for outdoor activities. The Van Power Super Power Pro 1500 comes with two options to move it around. The standard handle on the top and the telescoping handle that's similar to a suitcase handle. The app is simple and easy to use. Once connected, you can do several things. You can see the display screen and turn the AC-DC ports on or off. You can also turn on the LED light at the bottom of the unit and change the color. Dance party, anybody? If you're in a blackout, this feature allows you to find the power station easily in the dark. The display automatically shuts off after a few minutes to help preserve power. 
Okay, wait until you see what we've ran with this portable power station. We've used the Van Power Super Power Pro 1500 to charge phones, charge speakers, and amp up the vibes while we work on our crazy projects on the ranch. We've even ran multiple things at once. If you don't know already, Grindwald Paint Repeat is a big part of our life on the ranch, and the Van Power Super Power Pro 1500 has now made it even easier for us to grind weld paint repeat we plugged in the angle grinder and ran it for 30 40 minutes continuously with no problem paint mixer it ran it circular saw it ran it chop saw it ran it i know i was shocked too it also came in handy to run several other tools we used on our shower house build not only does it work for building site applications, it also came in handy to power other items as well. Slay all day with the power of espresso. I live for a good cappuccino. Or blend away and make ginger shots. Spicy and healthy. I also used it to blow dry not only my hair, but my dog's hair too. <laughs> Okay, for the best part, I have a coupon for you. Head to the description of this video where you can find the links to these products as well as the Van Powers website and use code Pacific Pines Ranch for 5% off. Head over to vanpowers.com and see what you can power. All right, time to get back on the grind. A few years ago, we decided to quit the rat race and venture down a completely unfamiliar path in life. We sold almost all of our possessions, renovated a camper van, and toured the US looking for a piece of land to start our journey. After almost two years, we found our piece of paradise in the Pacific Northwest, and Pacific Pines Ranch was born. Follow along as we chase our dreams to build an off-grid shipping container home, and to see our projects and adventures along the way. As we like to say on the ranch, the joy is in the journey. Alrighty, so this up here is too narrow and we need it to be more wide, which means we're gonna have to remove our original outside shower and inflatable hot tub enclosure and move it elsewhere. So our plan is to remove that and build a new one down here. So our plan is to try to use as much ma leftover materials as we can to build this structure. Therefore, we are digging in our scrap pile to make it work. So let me show you what we got going on. So I'm gonna start with explaining the foundation first because that's what we're working on today. So we have some leftovers from when we did that. So right now that we just had, we just cut them to size right now. So right now they're just kind of chilling here. We still need to assemble them and then put them somewhere level where we can fill them up with concrete. So basically how that will be is we will have some concrete dobies to keep the rebar off the ground. We will do a little uh, grid in there that comes out and makes handles. So when we need to move them, we can move them with the excavator. Because like I was saying, we would like the outside shower structure to be disassemblable. <laughs> be able to be disassembled. So, handles on the side, brackets on the top, which are anchored into the concrete. And that way we can put whatever we want on top and it's anchored and set. These are pretty large, these are 24 inch sono tubes and they are roughly about one foot each. We kind of made it work with what we had. So this one's like a little bit shorter, that one's a little bit shorter, and then pretty much these are all um, a tiny, tiny bit bigger, if not exactly one foot. That's not super important because we will make the ground level where they need to be and then level them out that way, but they're very close. Here we have all of my plans for the outside shower and all of my notes and everything. So I have some unique things planned for it. I'm excited to experiment with some stuff and uh, can't wait to share it with you all. So here we go.
Here we have all of the leftover sono tubes from when we did those sono tubes. Operation outside shower out here on Pacific Pines Ranch. We have my mom visiting So she's gonna be part of this project super fun families uh, that build together stay together <laughs> So anyways, we are down here We the other day came down here with the excavator and made kind of cleared a little path. We made these concrete piers from the leftover sono tubes from our first foundation pour. So here they are. We have six of them in our design. We're gonna drive the excavator down here and then bring them and put them down here. But first, we have to, these little orange marks here and here and uh, one's there and one's there, but we dug them out. So we're gonna bring the excavator down to make the spots that the piers go level and then go from there. Look, I even made my mom put on overalls for this. <laughs> All right, here we go. Huge shout out to my mom for coming out here and helping us on this project. Love you, mom.
making progress on the outside shower headbands on so you guys know what's up i'm going to be welding today so we are going to reuse a bunch of the corrugated panels from our build and as you see we've reused the galvanized tubes and some leftover timber some leftover wood we had just sitting around so yeah. trying to be resourceful and build this structure with mostly leftover materials that we have on site so we'll see how it goes today we're going to work on the actual structure part so fingers crossed we can get it almost done so let's go progress. I'd like to take a second to give a shout out to Trevor from Wazamu Life for helping us out on our shower build. Trevor and Ray live in this. They travel and live in their self-built overlander with their chunky dog, Lewis. Trevor also lives the grind weld paint repeat life. They built this crazy rig out of a dump truck and you will not believe how it turned out. I strongly believe in supporting your friends and family, so check out the description of this video for links to their channels where you can follow along on their adventures. So head over there and show them some love. Okay, back to work.
It's like, like heaven is shining down. So incredibly beautiful and magical and I absolutely love it when we wake up and come outside and it's just this view. So, little update on our little outside shower situation. The time has come. After years and years and years of using our other outside shower, it is time to tear it down. And it's very strange, but it's a little bit bittersweet. So we are just gonna enjoy the last moments of it. So a little like, goodbye shower. So the other day we poured the shower pan and we installed the window. So we have kind of a few more things we need to do until it's like ready to use. And it is very messy right now, so don't judge. But here we go, here's the start of it. So we got the shower pan drying which we ended up working on it until like midnight the other night because it just took forever and we underestimated the time but we got the window installed and the roof installed we still need to put one more we need to put this panel up there but everything is going well and it's really nice in here and the view from the window is really nice and I'm really looking forward to being able to use this and yeah. Yeah, it'll be a nice little upgrade, but it's weird. I'm a little bit sad to tear down the other shower. So it's a weird feeling. <laughs> so yeah, we are just going to start to undo it little by little. So here we go. And just like that, it's gone served us well over the years but i am excited to make this one our new outside shower new and improved okay back to work
Hello everybody! Winter is here. The rainy season has begun, unfortunately. But today I'm gonna take you down and give you a little update on the outside inside shower. <laughs> so come with me and take a look at the progress and don't make fun of my safety jacket because it's very warm and waterproof and I love it. This is temporary, but we just, as you can see, there's freaking mud everywhere. So that's part of the, uh, the rainy season that kind of sucks. Um, and we haven't really had a minute to do something better than this. This is kind of temporary after we will do a more serious path to go down there. So our temporary path is like this little trail, you know? Oh, cool. But the cool part is, is that I can go and find these are river rocks, so when they're all wet, I can really see what they are really well. And every now and then, like right here, look at that. Just found an agate. Pretty cool, huh? And another jasper. And I don't know if you know this, if I've ever said this, but I love rocks and I have a nice little rock collection. So these will go in my collection. Anyways, back on the path, here we go down here. Here it is in all of its glory. As you see, uh, we've painted it black and installed the door. And we've done many more things inside that I'm about to explain. So we had to get roof panels that were longer than our other ones because our other ones I think were eight feet and these ones are 12. And we got this door for free which i'm so happy about and so we had to buy some wood to kind of make a frame so that's another expense but welcome to uh the entrance again as i was saying like all of this is gonna be like rocked so that we can kind of go in and out without the mud going the mud goes everywhere guys like that will test your mental sanity like you've never had it tested before to just have freaking mud everywhere. Anyways, let's go inside. Look at that. First time that we ever built our own door frame, so I think it kind of came out uh, all right. It's uh, functional. So we just had the door. It didn't come with a frame. So we had to install this little lock thingy, I forget what it's called, striker or something like that. And uh, yeah, it's a little short the door compared to all the other doors we have, so that's kind of funny. But anyways, it's a mess in here. Don't judge us. We're in the middle of doing stuff and in the middle of projects, stuff gets crazy. Viant's super messy, so we have to uh, clean up after him. Or is my fault, guys. Just kidding, just kidding. Anyways, so we got these, um, I think they're polycarbonate sheets, but they are perfect for the shower area. Viant, he hand sculpted this shower pan. And uh, yeah, I just used some stain on the wood. All of this wood is just leftover wood that we've had from the build that I just stained and sealed. I'm really obsessed with this stain from, I think it's mini wax or something like that. It's called Jacko Bean. I don't know, I think it's a funny name. Jacko Bean. Anyways, we sealed along the shower pan for the water and we got this gigantic picture window. And eventually we'll have like a curtain here in case we need to uh, kind of close it off. But if we don't, I'm totally showering just with this beautiful view. So incredible. So today basically what we're doing is installing the floor of the shower. And we went back and forth a bunch of times on what to do for the floor. We really, like I said, we're just trying to keep the cost really at a minimum. We don't want to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on um, building this and this essentially will be temporary. Maybe it'll stay here for like a year or two, but eventually we'll take it down. So we don't want it to be too permanent either. So 
went to Walmart and we're near the paint section and then we saw that they had a bunch of vinyl floor on sale. So that's what we got to do the floor. Cause it's waterproof, it's easy to install and it was really not that expensive. I think it was like $1.50 a square foot or something like that. So not too bad. But yeah, here it is. So it's kind of like a fake wood looking thing. Pretty happy with it. So everything's going well. We are just going to uncover half of the floor right here. It's raining today, so we can't store anything outside as far as like our tools and stuff because they will get, everything will get wet. <laughs> so we're gonna do this half of the floor first and then put all the tools over there and then do this half of the floor after. So time to giddy up and get going. Okay, bye. What's up, you guys? Up. Oh. As you've been here, working hard. So let me show you our super messy shower progress. So as you can see, we got the floor installed. We decided to just buy some cheap vinyl floor from Walmart because it was the fastest and easiest way that we could do the floor and it was pretty inexpensive. So we were like, screw it, why not? Then we went to Ikea and found this uh, sink top. I don't even know how you call it, but um, so that was awesome. So we got that and we just like built a little ghetto table and we have an on-demand propane water heater, which is pretty hilarious. I still don't understand why it says winter and summer right here. So if someone can explain that to me, that'd be great. And then you guys are going to laugh so hard. Um, what do you think this is? If you guessed a bidet, you're right. <laughs> this was in the clearance section uh, by in Walmart and we were like, why not? I think it'll be uh i think it'll work well actually for what we need so we just set that up so we have a little hose splitter right here half goes to the shower half goes here to our little sink washing station and our little washing machine so we can use that to fill it up and rinse it and same and now we can actually do our dishes standing up which is like a huge upgrade for us so we are just gonna work me and my man work on setting up the sh the sink <laughs> and eventually get to painting the other half of the shower oh okay yeah i, I kind of like the rusty brown <laughs> it's red <laughs> All right, yeah, so uh, it was a good uh, thing. We got a lot of stuff at Ikea, so that was pretty cool. Got the cheap floor at Walmart, and uh, yeah, so things are going well. It'll be a nice upgrade for us, and can't wait to share it with you guys. It's working.
So we're out here working on our portable water heater. It's got our whole little ghetto set up right here, but hey, it works, so don't judge. But let me show you this, okay? First, we have winter and summer. And in the directions, what does it say? In winter, turn it to winter. And in summer, turn it to summer. What it does, I have no idea. Here we have fire control, which we guess is for the flame inside. But what's interesting is this. So here we have water control and we have a little thermometer right here, which means I'm gonna guess this side means low and this side means high, but then this little thing right here means low and right here means high. So basically we are just like turning all of the knobs, <laughs> trying to figure out which one does what. This one we figured out is for the, the flame. Still don't know what winter summer means. And this one is the water pressure and this is the low pressure and this, or sorry. Yeah, this is the low, the high pressure and this is the low pressure, which is pretty confusing. But we have hot water and we have a sink, so I'm not gonna complain too much. It's the little things in life. Don't laugh too hard at our little faucet setup. It works. And now that we're kind of done setting up our little, <laughs> God, this is so hilarious, our little situation here, now we're gonna do the peel. Look at that. <laughs> so now we are ready to do all of the all of the things with the sink. And we got some pretty cool accessories to go with the sink, so my foraging and stuff is going to be next level. But first time to do dishes. Hello, everybody. Okay, so a little explanation. Uh, as you see, I got my headband on, which means I'm gonna be potentially welding today. Fingers crossed. So, we are working on the outside shower 2.0 down there. And it's pretty chilly sometimes. And we used to have in our old shower, we still have it, but a little Mr. Buddy heater and that kind of does the job but on the nights where it's like dipping down into the 30s um, it's pretty chilly to shower down there so we have a, wo a tent wood stove that we bought like forever ago that we need to like kind of refurbish but we are gonna try to install a wood stove now this is not gonna be like a conventional way of how to install it as I mentioned before, this is temporary. Um, I think we'll keep it here for like a year or two, but it's not gonna be like here forever. So we are just gonna do our best to make a wood stove to help us warm that space just a little bit. 
So with that being said, we need to figure out a way for the uh, pipe of the stove to exit the shower. Um, so we are going to try to do 245 degrees on this pipe to get it to go like up from the stove out and then up again and this is the first time we are messing around with round tubes we've done a lot of square tubing but first time with round tubes and we are just going to mock it up on this let me show you what we got going on so we are going to mock it up on this to just make sure everything's good before we start cutting uh, the the pipe for the the chimney pipe I guess we are not the best with angles and it can get pretty confusing pretty fast so we're just gonna do a little experiment on this leftover pipe see if it works if it does we're gonna pull out the uh, pipes for the uh, for the wood stove and get those situated so fingers crossed it goes well but let's go. Now we're going with the high heat spray paint, giving that a nice, uh, nice coat so it hopefully doesn't rust too much. Fingers crossed. <laughs>
Okay, we got our little path right here. As you can see, we have our little paver stash right there in the mud. So these are all super muddy. I just tried to wash them in the shower. It ain't working. So I'm going to take them over there in the corner and we're going to give them a nice little pressure wash to uh, make them not so dirty. <laughs> Let's go. Having some technological difficulties with my GoPro, I just tried to record, I think eight times, and I don't know why it says I have 55% battery and I have four hours left on my memory card, and it just keeps turning off after like seven seconds. So anyways, I'm gonna do a little tour of what we did we didn't really have time to film today because we were sort of in a rush, so I'm going to show you guys the updates on the shower, and uh, yeah, after this we're pretty much done for the day, so we will get back at it tomorrow and finish what we didn't finish today, so check it out. Alright, so we finished this little corner for the wood stove, we finished refurbishing the wood stove, we got everything welded together except where this part meets this part which that will be i'll have to plasma cut a hole right there and it will go out and i'll have to weld it on the outside but if you can't see or hear it's raining so i can't do that today so we got this little corner situated we installed a privacy screen on the door and oh yeah and we are working on enclosing this side of the shower we just stained a piece of plywood that's gonna go pretty much in this little opening and I'm gonna seal it. And uh, yeah, that should be okay. So yeah, that's pretty much it for today. It's gonna be dark probably in like 20 minutes. So we're gonna call it a day. Uh, clean everything up because it's super messy in here. I don't know why this happens, but pretty much every time we work, we just take out all the tools and put them everywhere. So we have to put them all away. Um, but back at it tomorrow, so it's a good day. Okay, are you guys ready for what is outside? We have something special to show you. Alright, here we go.
Look at that. Look at all the snow. We never, ever, ever have snow like this. It's pretty beautiful, but I'm also glad that it's just, uh, that does not like this all the time. <laughs> wow. I don't think you need the dustpan. <laughs> Winter wonderland today out on the ranch. Look at this snow everywhere. Today we are going to continue working on the outside shower. Hopefully we will have it almost done today. As you can see, there's snow everywhere. So this is like pretty unique experience for us because usually that doesn't snow at all. Or if it does, it's just a little dust and it'll melt almost immediately. So this is um, a new experience. <laughs> so we basically have a few more things to do for the shower. Um, we're gonna try to accomplish those. And tomorrow it's supposed to be sunny and nice. And I'm sure the snow hopefully will be on by then. And then we will try to weld the wood stove. So let's see what we can finish today. All right, guys, here we are, the outside shower. Gonna knock the snow off my feet a little bit. Look at this, look how kind of dark it is in here. It's not terrible, but it's definitely not as bright as it usually is because the roof is covered in snow. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, so again, excuse the mess. I know it is very messy, but let me show you what we're doing today. First, wow, amazing, look at this view. So incredible. So we are going to install the sheet of plywood right there and seal it. And then I think we're gonna work on a, a little bench right here. And just a few other small things that we need to tie the place together. And then I think as well, work on a little stand for the washer and the dryer. And yeah, see how far we get. Splinter? Yeah. Oh god! Whoa. Good job, babe. Made of sugar. <laughs> All right, so it's installed and uh, looks pretty nice. Still have to seal around the edges and potentially do a little shelf, but uh, we'll see uh, how it goes. Maybe we'll do the shelf here, I don't know. But yeah, it's pretty legit. So far, so good. All right, working on our little prototype right here for our bench, and I think we I think we got something. 
But I think we're gonna go and stain these so that they all match. So we'll see, it's a start. We are working on the outside shower and it's snowing. I'm about to hide in front of the door right here and throw a snowball at my hand. So let's make one. I would, send you one, I would send you one back, but I'm way too cold, man. <laughs> oh. Ooh, it is cold. Okay, so we finished building the bench. Got the bench there. It's not done yet, but everything's gonna get really messy before it gets cleaner. Now, we're gonna build this shelving system that we got from Ikea to go in the corner by the shower to hold all of the toiletries and stuff, so. Let's go. Okay, so we just built that shelving unit, shelf unit, this one right here. Uh, where's the name? Upside down, but that's the name. Uh, zero out of 10, do not buy that. <laughs> it is the worst, most flimsy little shelving unit that I have ever seen in my life like the plastic ones that you like put together from walmart are better don't buy this anyways here it is we had to screw it to this post right here because it's so look it's so flimsy and it keeps like warping and it's not level and oh man yeah but we need something here for, you know, the storage, so this is what we got. But yeah, learn from our mistakes. Don't buy that. Okay. Hello, everybody. Okay, so we've lived here for years, a couple years now, and this is the first time ever that we've had snow for more than, like, 20 minutes. And, uh... So it's a different kind of experience, one that we're not super prepared for, but it's not that bad. But anyways, so let me show you. As you can see, the ground is snowy slash icy 
This is just straight ice right here. But it's okay, it's manageable. So we're in here working on the outside shower again. And today we are setting up the wood stove. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome me. <laughs> so we built this bench and stained it and I'm pretty happy with it. This is what we built out of just like leftover stuff that we had laying around and uh, I'm obsessed with this stain. I love it so much. It's this stuff right here. Wood finish. Jacko bean. Whatever that means. But I love it. Awesome. So we still have to seal that because uh, we just stained it the other night. Okay, so the wood stove. Where did you put the wood stove? Oh, <laughs> okay, so it's there and then the chimney is like there, whatever you call it, the flue, the chimney, I don't know. We got our little paver set right here. It's not like the most beautiful setup, but this is what we had on site, leftover material, and it will work. So we're gonna, basically what we're gonna do is install the wood stove here. So I need to plasma cut a hole for the chimney to, <laughs> to leave the outside shower and go up. So this bent part right here is going to go through the wall and then I'm going to weld the straight part onto the end of the bent pipe. And then actually we should be good to go. I think we're going to install just a, a sheet of plywood on the roof right here because I'm worried that the heat is going to melt this these uh, polycarbonate sheets. I don't know, but better safe than sorry because I don't want to be, you know, in here and then have the roof just melt onto the wood stove. So anyways, we are just getting everything together. Viant went and got all the stuff for me to, uh, to plasma cut and weld the tubes together. So that's pretty much what we're gonna do. And uh, then I think I'm gonna cut two pieces of rebar to stabilize the chimney. <laughs> I don't know what else to call it. <laughs> We're learning, guys. We're learning, okay? So, if it's not the proper term, my bad. <laughs> but anyways, so I'm gonna weld two sticks of rebar and a vertical one to attach the vertical part of the chimney pipe so that it's held in place pretty well because sometimes it does be getting a little windy out here. So, yeah. So there it is. Got the plasma cutter. Going to set everything up and get to it. So let's go.
disque. Okay, so I got this in the sale section, I think at Home Depot. Um, Rust-Oleum wood stain, carbon gray. So we're gonna put that around the door on the wood frame and see how it looks. I tested it out, it's pretty uh, intense, it's very gray. <laughs> but I think that will do a nice contrast between the black door and the black corrugation, so. Let's see. In the outside shower. Okay, so it's a pretty monumental moment. Viant is about to start the first fire. So here we go. Hello. All right, so if we're lucky, today will be the last day that we are building the shower, finishing up the shower, so. Cross our fingers, it's the last day. Okay, let's go. out here in the we have to think of a new name for this because it's not outside I don't know we've debated on calling it the clean machine so we'll see I see, if, I see it's a good one so we'll see if that sticks so let me show you what we did and the updates so we got the bench uh, sealed and stained I went around and stained all of the wood uh, just I didn't finish this piece and a couple other pieces, but I got most of it sealed The wood stove is working really well We do need to buy some more pavers to like make the back a little higher and Maybe for the side right here to extend it a tiny bit, but other than that it works great We uh, tested it out and everything's awesome. We just need to cut a bunch more wood because it 
it works almost too good. <laughs> it burns the wood so fast. It's also pretty small too though, so. And so I stained that. I didn't stain this one yet because we had the fire going and I didn't want to burn myself. Uh, stained by the window, around the window, by the roof. The bench is done. The beautiful bench. Well, no, it's not completely done, but it's getting there. So we finished staining that. Viant is working on uh, staining the sink area. We got our little table slash bench for the washer machine that's gonna go here. And then the dryer is gonna go up there and everything is uh, coming along. The clean machine is making progress. Welcome to the clean machine. Today we are going to be using the shower for the first time since we finished the clean machine, <laughs> since we finished building it. So I'm pretty excited, so I'm going to take you guys along for the ride, and let's get clean! Alright, so first things first, got to turn on the water over here. So there it is. Got the wood stove burning. And now I am going to set the temperature. I like it pretty scalding hot, so let's see if it's good. Usually I like it to be around 117. Oh, look at that. All right, let's check it. Oh yeah. Yes. Amazing. All right, shoes off, let's go. Oh my gosh, this is absolutely incredible. Oh. You can't even imagine how 
amazing this is after a long day of working what it is to come and have this nice shower in this nice room wow it's super steamy in here amazing a plus Welcome to the clean machine. So let's head inside and take a look. So here we are at the entrance of the clean machine. So a few things I would like to mention is number one, it's not done yet. The structure is done and we have most of the major parts completed, but in the next few weeks, I am going to work with Viant on kind of doing a little bit of decorative touches to, I don't know, make it a little cozy in here, you know, amp up the vibes if you know what I mean. So be sure to subscribe to see how the clean machine really turns out. All right, so the other thing I'd like to mention is majority of the materials that we used in this build are leftover from either the house or other projects that we've worked on, other than a few spies here and there. So let me take you around and show you what's up. Let's go. Okay, starting off with the entrance area. Check it. So we got our little electricity panel right here. It's pretty high tech, if you can't tell. <laughs> Also, another thing I would like to mention is this structure is meant to be somewhat temporary, which is why we didn't take the time to do it as a permanent structure. So yeah, also keep that in mind too. Okay, so the electricity. So here we have the electricity. That's how we turn everything on and off obviously. <laughs> We've also been using this a lot and I am super, super impressed with this Van Powers portable power station. Check the link in my description for a link to this guy. All right, we got our little mat to take off our shoes because as you know, it's a freaking muddy wonderland over there. So try to minimize the amount of mud that we get everywhere. So we got this little bench that if the power station wasn't there, you could sit down and take off your shoes. And right here we have our washer dryer combo and I really love these two machines. I'm really shocked at how well they've worked. It's They're both pretty simple and cheap. So if you are like in a small apartment or an RV or something like that, they work really well for what they are. All right, moving on to the sink. The other reason why we call it the clean machine. <laughs> we found this uh, sink top, I think at Ikea in the as is section. There was a couple dents on it, like right here. There's a little dent and I think somewhere else around it, there was another little dent. So we got it for super cheap and we built everything underneath it with leftover materials. We also built this bench and this shelf with leftover materials and just stained everything to match. But I didn't stain this one yet, which is why it's still just plain wood. All right, so right here we have our propane on-demand water heater, which is incredible. I absolutely love these things. We have two of them, one over there and one over there. And this totally cracks me up. This, is a bidet <laughs> but we don't use it as a bidet okay so everybody relax okay so this is like how we do dishes and stuff 
and it was the simplest way we found it for sale at the clearance section i think at walmart um for really cheap in america we don't really use bidets i don't know that might be changing and stuff so i'm sure people were not trying to buy that so we got it for super cheap and it hooked up directly to our on-demand water heater so this was great and then here we have our little uh, splitter which is where we split the water to go either to the sink right here or to the shower behind here this little area right here is a work in progress for now we just have a table so I can fold the clothes from our little washer and dryer combo right there so I can bring the clothes over here and fold them yeah so that will change in the future this right here, I am pretty happy with how it turned out. It's not completely done yet, like a lot of things in here, but so far, so good. So again, we reused a bunch of materials and built this kind of cool little bench. And it's kind of tall and large, so we, when we come to shower, we can put our clothes. And I'm going to make some little holders to hang the towel and things like that. So it's pretty much finished, but it's also a work in progress. And we have a little bit of storage under here. Over here, we have our wood stove set up. We got this wood stove online for like 120 bucks, like years ago. Um, it's for a tent, but we thought it would be perfect for this. And so far it's worked great. So I'm pretty happy with how, uh, how it's working. Here we are going to have, I, they're not gonna be as close to the wood stove, but for now this is where they are when the wood stove is not running. This is where we're gonna store the wood. So those are a work in progress. I think I'm gonna paint them because clearly red does not go with the vibe. Not that I don't like red, but anyways, moving along. So this window is gigantic and is one of my favorite parts of the clean machine. It is so incredible to hang out in here and have this beautiful view of our forest and our land and where it's situated at. You can see the sun rays go through the forest and it's just incredible. I totally love it. We had a pretty challenging time finding curtains for this window because you never know. Sometimes we have guests over or if it's at night and you can't even see the view, you know, you just want to close it for some privacy. They don't make readily available curtains for gigantic windows like that. Or if they do, they're the ones that split to both sides and we cannot put a curtain here because it will light on fire. <laughs> and I am not trying to start any fires up in here that are not inside the wood stove. So. I had to order some fabric, some waterproof fabric to do our own curtains. So that's still a work in progress. But now for the shower, follow me. Okay, so starting off with the outside, we used these insulated polycarbonate panels and they're amazing. They let so much light in. They're perfect for this application. So far they've, uh, they've worked great. And Follow me to the entrance. So here we have it. The main reason for the clean machine, the shower. So we have another on-demand propane heater and we have some of our products and stuff that we use. And we have an extra long hose that comes up there to the shower head. This shower pan Viant hand shaped and it works so well. I'm so happy with it. Yeah, it's it's incredible It really is just such a joy to come in here And look at the view Okay, don't look at this though. This is ugly <laughs> This is materials from building this that we haven't put in our scrap pile yet. So Minus the little scrap wood pile here. <laughs> the view is so nice. Right now we have the sun coming through the trees, although it's hard to see because you can see my reflection, but it's incredible. It's so peaceful and serene and I love it. 
These little guys are the outside string lights from Harbor Freight. They are amazing. And we just hung them kind of however that we could, kind of going across over to the electricity panel. So let me show you how we do for the shower. So that you turn it on. And there it is. This is super cool. It's got a little temperature gauge right here. Look at all the steam coming out. Oh, it's so amazing. I love it so much. So it kind of doubles as like a steam room in a way. So it's amazing. So yeah, just wanted to show you guys that because it's incredible. Let, let's turn that off. The roof we made with some polycarbonate sheets, the sun tough panels, and it lets so much light in and you can see kind of the forest from inside. So it's really nice. It's really bright in here. Even though winters in the Pacific Northwest can be gloomy, it's always very nice in here. Though, because it's not insulated, I know you guys can probably see my breath as I'm speaking, it does get pretty chilly down here, which is why we put the wood stove there. So the wood stove makes it, it's totally doable though. It warms up really fast and it stays warm for quite a while. So it's definitely doable to go get the wood stove running, do some dishes, do some laundry, and do some showering. The clean machine. <laughs> I also love this table because there's this huge uh, countertop right here and when I go foraging for plants or if we go fishing and we have to clean fish or crabs or anything like that, this is a great spot to do it. Another reason why I love the clean machine. Another purpose of the clean machine. It's endless. So yeah, that's about it for the clean machine so far. Don't forget updates coming soon on the design aspect of it. A little bit of design and decoration coming in here soon. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Help support our channel by leaving a comment or liking and sharing this video. As always, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to keep up with our projects and adventures on the ranch. And see you in the next video. Okay, bye.